Today we're talking about the email parser tool in Zapier. Parser by Zapier helps you send data through Zapier that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Maybe due to a lack of an integration, or it might just simply be easier for you, depending on your workflows. Parser takes bits and pieces of data from an email so that you can use it in a Zap. First, let's create a Parser account, and then we'll move on to using it in a Zap. Start by going to parser.zapier.com. This is where you'll set up mailboxes that you can then send emails into for parsing. To start, click on the Login with your Zapier account button, and then the Authorize button on the next page. If you're not currently logged into your Zapier account, you'll be prompted to. Next, you'll be greeted with the Mailboxes Index page. You can have as many parser inboxes as you want, and each inbox should correspond with a single version of an email you need to parse. Click on Create Mailbox to make your first one. From there, go ahead and send an email to the new email address you've just created. You'll want to use this email to create a template. If you're forwarding an existing email to the parser, you'll want to be careful not to include extra threads or replies, email signatures, or indented content, as that can cause issues when you define the template. You might try copy and pasting the content into a new email instead, or set up auto-forwarding. On the mailbox settings page for this parser inbox, you can define a unique address. It can be helpful to include something that reminds you what it's used for, which makes things a lot easier later on when finding it for a zap. Below that, you'll find the initial template section with the contents of the email you just sent in. You have access to the subject line and the body in the parser tool. For the best results, the emails you send into this inbox should match the format of this email exactly. You can train the parser to handle other formats that are slightly different by creating multiple templates, but for now, let's just finish our look around and our initial template. Below are a few more options for the body source and parser engine, but unless you run into trouble, I'd recommend leaving those default options alone. It's super important that the email you want to parse has the fields you're looking to grab on separate lines. If you can't, use a non-space delimiter, like the pipe character, to help the email parser find the field boundary. If they exist in a single blob of text, it's much harder for a parser to read and you could run into errors. If your emails must be in that type of format, you might want to look at mailparser.io as a more robust solution for your parsing needs. They can even help parse text inside of documents too. Now it's time to identify which parts of the email we want to parse into separate fields, so we can map those in zaps. Simply highlight any of the data in the template itself, and in this case, I'm going to highlight the customer name, so I'll call this selection name. You'll see the template change format a bit on the section you highlighted, which is a good thing. If you want to rename that bit of data, you can left click on it to make changes. Continue this process for each piece of data you want to use in a zap, and when you're done, click on the Save Address and Template button at the bottom of the page. Now that we're done setting up our mailboxes, let's go to our Zapier dashboard and make a new zap. Search for and select Parser in the Trigger app box. Then, click on the New Email Trigger and Continue. On the next page, we'll need to click on the Connect an Account button and authorize the Parser tool to connect to our Zapier account, and then Save and Continue. Next, choose the mailbox that you'd like to use. This is where a descriptive parser email address can be helpful if you happen to have several parser mailboxes. Now let's test it. And there it is. All the data from the parser, from the email itself as well as the template used to parse the email and the fields you defined are here. If your email isn't being parsed as expected, you'll want to report past emails on your parser dashboard as either accurate or inaccurate by visiting your mailbox history by clicking the last email date on your parser dashboard. This will help improve our parsing algorithm. You can also define a few extra templates to give us some extra information to parse with. Click the Edit Extra Template and tag that email. Every extra template you tag gives us more data to work off of and improves the accuracy of the parsing itself. From there, you can use this data in any of the thousand plus apps that Zapier connects with. Not only can the parser be a neat way to pull in extra data from some apps that we support, but it can also be helpful in cases where the app you use doesn't have a Zapier connection yet. That's Parser. Explore it, test it, build even more powerful zaps.